it is the touchline here on Y254 and it's all about matters, sports and everything that has been happening. You have been watching some of the highlights of what happened in Nakuru when it came to the Prince Louis Sevens where Cabras actually became the winners, dethroning Menengai Oilers who are the former winners of the Prince Louis Sevens. Currently, we've got the Christie Sevens that is happening at the RFUA grounds and we've got uh, Mwalimu Kikechi Kombo, the first actually coach to win the seventh title when it comes to the Kenya Secondary School Games in the East African region, taking his team to win it in Gulu, Uganda. Your work yeah. has been <laughs> great when it comes to secondary school games. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. I think it's been good, and uh, I've seen the competition in Western. I yes. think after COVID, mm -hmm. uh, guys are, the teams are playing very well, and uh, encouraging to see that the games are back uh, in full. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, the, 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 the decisions that have been brought now to for the national competition again, and yes. now this one's on full scale. So that tells us our development is good and future uh, players are developing unlike when during the COVID where everything won't stand still and uh, students were not able to play. Yes. So I think they had a huge gap in between uh, transition. Mm -hmm. So once we have a huge transition, that tells us also that uh, uh, future players for, for representing the country, I think the situation was not well. But now I'm happy to see that everything is back and even the fans are back to the stadium. Well, happy. It, it is <laughs> actually, that is the conversation we have been having here with also Ken Andrews because you look at at 6 in the morning, at yeah. 8, the stadium is already full. Kitale, and currently, right now, we have got the finals happening. At actual, the game is live on KBC Channel 1. We've yeah. got Dagoretti playing at St. Anthony's Kitale in the finals at Bukungu Stadium. What a game that people are watching there and enjoying at home in Bukungu. Yeah, it is a big game. And uh, I think the main question should is, and uh, the main puzzle here is how do we translate this support for high school yes. games? into you know conventional the, the main leagues the professional leagues because we see the kpl we see the kenya cup and then we see the turnout in bukungu yes today and yesterday mm -hmm. i think that has to you know kick up a few questions yes, in yeah. the minds of the leaders of the various yeah. federations because yes. we want to market our top tier mm -hmm. as good as how the high school is being projected and many are saying that the high school games especially even football and rugby especially yes you know they are saying that they are better quality than our own <laughs> top tiers you know <laughs> well, yeah. the, the question will come to be where is the disconnect you, mm -hmm. you're looking at high school games yeah, yeah. attracting crowds yes yeah uh, actually even when we go to the bull ring in kakamega yeah. when we do the catch sevens yeah th those crowds are not the way we are experiencing them today at kakamega yeah in your own opinion analysis where's the disconnect between our sports where we don't go to sport, but for high school, yeah. people are coming out to watch it. No, I, I think just the what were the policies. I think people in this country they have a, a very poor policy of running sports because uh, traditionally, well, like for example, I was, I was, I was looking at uh, the, how, how the Irish are placing themselves in, the, in terms of uh, rugby development in the country. Yes, and they were in the north, in the in the northern part of Ireland. They, they, they have not been having that tradition of rugby. But see, now the rugby is now starting developing, and that's why they are looking for a director of rugby mm -hmm. to go and uh, instill and develop the game in that particular region. But mm -hmm. in Kenya, we know that these guys come from Western, especially the sportsmen and uh, mm -hmm. sportswomen. They are majorly in Western, but we've not done massive investment in Western. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to see some of the governors now, they are talking up and they are even uh, congratulating and they are promising, even to some of them, they are in the stadium, Natembea. I promise to be go there and cheer the teams. So you see now that's where the, the problem is. I told you, okay, if the government could have done in such a way that the Minister of Sports invest those, we have those facilities in those particular regions, yes. I think uh, this country could have been far. In Rift Valley, you put their uh, facilities for athletics. Mm -hmm. In Western region, uh, facilities for ball games, uh, probably in uh, the region of Mombasa and the other regions. But mostly, 80% yeah. uh, you put them in those regions to tap the talent because those mm -hmm. talents are there. Even when you see the yes. those guys who are playing soccer, look mm -hmm. at the names. Yes. Okay, they come from uh, the same... Uh, that particular region and uh, when you see like clubs that have developed in rugby yes look at this one in Nairobi because their facilities here but which player these players come from where they come from the western region yes so every year they go and scout and bring them to Nairobi they get them the houses but now unless like Cabras now you see now Cabras has done and has placed those facilities in western mm -hmm. where these players and you see how Cabra is doing winning the uh, Kenya Cup is uh, now uh, dominating in a yes. seven circuit again uh, I, if to, to elaborate further yeah. Are you trying to say that we should go in a policy where that 
let's tap specialist talent yes. from where it is from. Yeah. Like saying that Rift Valley, mm. it's athletics. Yeah. Let's give them the advantage of bringing us athletes. Sure. Western, it's football and rugby. Yeah. Let's give them that chance. Is that what we are saying? Yeah, that, that's what works. And yeah. even if you like, just look at the Rift Valley, mm. athletics themselves, they have come up and put up for some facilities. Yes. It's, it, it, it's a shame that the government cannot just put up a, 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 an international state facilities in those particular regions. Mm. But others have come up, even some from, from uh, those ones who, have, who, who changed their citizenship to the other countries like Netherlands. Mm. They have come and invest in those particular regions for, the, for them to tap the time. But see now, what they are doing is just scratching the back. Let us have those facilities in Kericho, let us have them in Baringo, let us have them in Iten, uh, where, where we have this, and then you tap the trans in Mount Elgon. Look at the people who came from like, the Maasai from Mount Elgon. Yes. No facilities, but they are going to win the 10,000 meters in, uh, yes. in, 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 uh, in Olympics. Mm -hmm. So that tells us we've, we've not harnessed, we've not tapped. What we are doing is uh, people, uh, athletes themselves, they are coming up, and uh, you guys who are invest little people who are investing in sports, mm -hmm. who just love sports. So we, we're not tapping into the talent. But if we put those facilities in those regions, like now Western, mm -hmm. just see these are, these are K Triple SA. They have organized for a tournament, three days tournament. Yes. But see the way people are there. Crowd, huge crowds. People are even uh, scrambling for, for space. But now if you can have it, uh, good facilities every weekend, people are training. We have, cre we have, we have we've put there high performance uh, centers where people now, these are less conditioned condition properly. I know K Kenya will never be divided in some of these competitions when you go for either African Championship or, or World Championship. Well, it's a very good conversation because Kenya, when it comes to these competitions, we are in all of these competitions. Current, we are just coming off from what happened at the Trinidad and Tobago, the youth. Again, the youth commonwealth games that actually come there and Kenya came back with the nine medals, five gold and four silver in that one. Currently, we have actually sent a team to Budapest, Hungary for the World Athletics Championships there and I can tell you it is going to be a cracker in some of those track and field events and now we are talking about everything that is happening here in the country and the Christie Sevens is also happening at the Ngong Road RFUA. Can Cabras defend their title from what they have done uh, at the Prince Lou? Yeah, I think uh, with the coming in of uh, Ayange as uh, the coach for Cabras, I think these are former Kenyan Seventh player. I think he has gelled well with the players and uh, having also looked at the way the players have played, they have won Kenya Cup mm -hmm. and quite a number of these guys are also playing for the Sevens and the Simbas team. Like Ashundu, uh, Derek Ashundu is playing for the Simbas. Yes. He was once uh, playing for Kenya uh, for the for Kenya Sevens. Uh, Shuja, that's uh, he was playing uh, forward. We also have uh, Tanga who is playing for is the scrummer for Shuja. Uh, we also have the likes of um, Adaka who is also playing and then the young guy who is coming up and Benze. I think he's uh, playing so well. <coughs> so when you have all these people uh, playing for the Cabras, I think Cabras is on its own class and uh, they have gelled well and they are playing well and they have mastered uh, the, seven, the, the, the local 7-7 uh, seven, seven circuit. Uh, yeah. so, so the, the local 7 circuit. So I, I see probably the way they have won three, ma three matches today. I think if they continue tomorrow again, uh, the way they are prepared, uh, they, they might win again the, the third trophy and definitely now they will be uh, home and drive for this particular year to acclaim the the the, the, the national uh, the, the, the the overall national national championship. Well, it's a very good one for them. Can do you give them a chance? Because they have got. I, I remember Jonah Kumal actually came off from injury yeah. and played in the 15s and actually been pushing them and uh, for sevens. He's turning out to be a very difficult and different animal at mm -hmm. the seven circuit. Yeah, yeah. Ken, Ken Wasike, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Kevin mm -hmm. Wasike is also yes. a Kenya sevens player. Mm -hmm. uh, very strong player. So combined with Kubu, they are doing yeah. so well. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, based of their performances in the past two tournaments, I think it's very hard to see anyone else but them winning it. But you know, as I said before, uh, off off camera, I think Impala, it's yes. their tough, and now they have to defend mm -hmm. and try to get something. Yeah. Well, it's a big one there. We've got some of the games that are actually happening, and we'll be giving you those results <coughs> as we go on with the program. Pool A, we have got uh, Cabras uh, playing there and uh, they are trying to defend their title against uh, Nakuru RFC. And then uh, Masinda Muleru, their neighbor and feed club is also there. And then Impala Saracens who are making their first appearance in the circuit. At uh, Pool B, we've got uh, Kenya Harlequin and then uh, Homeboys, Dista Falcons and the uh, university side Black Blood. And uh, defending champions for the Christian Strathmore Leos will be playing against the uh, KCB Catholic Monks 
and Kisumu. And then Pool D has newly promoted side Sigala Gala, who have been put to test against seasonal national seven circuit holders, Menengai Oilers, Mwamba, and then the oldest club in the country, Nondi Scripts. So it's a tough one there as it goes on. And just thinking yeah. of from uh, the secondary school games that are happening, rugby seems to be the sport that actually tries to absorb some of these players in, let's say, in the rugby circuit coming on from the secondary school games to try and play for these clubs. And uh, some of them we can see them, like the likes of Oscar Uma yeah. came from the high school yeah. to play for the clubs here in the country. He actually went on for Stratomolios. Yeah, sure. And for, for them, it, it looks like a very good way for them to tap that talent that is happening, that is being brought up at the moment. Yeah, you see now the, the, the biggest challenge is uh, Kenya, these clubs don't have academies. They don't have uh, the yes. league of under 20. Yeah. That's where the problem is. When I was the director of uh, rugby, I really insisted. And there's quite a number of uh, stuff that I have put on the table mm -hmm. on the development, on the issues where we can change our mentality and now develop the game. There's no way we can have a club, a Kenyan club, that's not having a, 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 a youthful uh, side. Uh, yes. It's an irony because so how do you develop, how do you win? So the, the issue is they are just doing uh, what, uh, what they just they're short, 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 they're short comes. Mm -hmm. They're not doing <coughs> long-term programs yes. where they keep on. Uh, if a university has developed a player, university clears the uh, fourth year, now yes. they, they tap this player to come and play for the club. But see, now they don't want the transition. Mm -hmm. But if the club could have under 20, like what's yes. happening in South Africa, each club has got, each category have yes. under 14, under 15, mm -hmm. under 16, and these players are monitored all through. Yeah. Look like a player, the flyer of uh, New Zealand, Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. You can monitor even the, how he was playing in high school, how he was uh -huh. uh, winning in high school, Pollard, how Actually, they were winning Africa, in high school. <coughs> the youngest player, yeah, uh, Arense and, uh, Arense at and Moody, years old, yeah, and Moody. for the World, World Cup. For the World Cup. So, yeah. so th those are the things that we are lacking here in Kenya. So the only option is for them now to tap from the high school. Uh, like the scouts are there in high school. I've seen uh, uh, my, my friends, they are old, they are there. They are scouting for the players yeah. to come. But see now, there are players down there. If they can be able to say the academies. You, you, you don't need to set an academy here uh, in Nairobi. Yes. You see now, I have a club in Nairobi, set academy in Western. Uh -huh. Yeah, just have a stadium, just have facilities, have even schools also in that facilities. You see, now yeah. academy should also have schools. So where yeah, the students just read, then in the evening they come for training. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think uh, the soccer, they're doing that. Uh, I think they are setting up an academy in Kitale Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, St. Andrews Kitale. Yes. Where they tap and the K KFF invests because yes. they have discovered those regions, they have players. Now the clubs, clubs come up, they can be able to sell them to foreign clubs mm -hmm. uh, uh, just for, for, for them to develop their talent. I think that, mm -hmm. that's a good idea and that's what also rugby should, should be able to do. Mm -hmm. Or the union can also set up um, a, a center in a, a high performance center in, in Western region yes. to tap on talent. They have coaches, elite coaches, and they have the referees all round so that they can be able to, to coach these uh, play, players from there. <coughs> that works. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we, we had done that and we were having a coach, elite uh, Pau, who was moving across the country, getting these players and putting them in camps, at least when they have schooled. You see now, it, we, yes. had, we had made a policy that when schools were closed, we bring now these players in camp, at mm -hmm. least for uh, three, two, three weeks, they play. But now the issue is uh, money. You see now, mm -hmm. uh, the union has got uh, very good plans. And uh, when you go to the development desk, there's a lot of uh, information that was put there for development of rugby in Kenya. And we had even put up to 27. Yes. Because we say this particular group of players will wait for us uh, for World Cup 2027. We have, the, the, we have a group of players for under 16. They will take us to rugby in 2031, 2034. And we had to send those programs and we were now to set these particular centers to train these players for those particular programs. But now you see now the issue is uh, funds. Uh, we have uh, issues with the sponsors. They share away from investing. Kenyan uh, sponsorship, that's the biggest problem. They want short term. They don't want long term. Ah, you see now yes. someone, like South Africa people, someone will come and invest for 10 years, mm -hmm. some of 15 years or 20 years. But Kenya, someone wants to invest for two years, three years, and then you renew. How do you work? So there's a lot of uncertainty there. Eh? Yes. <laughs> then you have payment of, uh, yeah. of money also. Yeah. Uh, the vote heads from one program to another. So that's the, where the biggest challenge is. And so that's why this club now, they rely on high schools. They tap the talents from the high school. They do short-term programs. Then they, they keep on moving. So you find that even the clubs, this is so erratic. One, one year the club is up. The following year the club is down. Just like that. That's where mm. the biggest challenge is. And mm. we need to stabilize. And then something else about Kenya Rugby Union. See now these particular players. See now this, this is a time that we are on the lowest moment. Because mm. Kenya 7 has been relegated. Yes. Simba didn't qualify for the World Cup. Uh, uh, this, we've seen the juniors, how they are performing. Actually, this that, performance. that can usually bring us to the question. Like uh, now we have got the seven circuits that uh, is actually happening. 
and we were educated from the HSBC sevens. Does that have an impact yeah. on uh, our local circuit itself? A big one, and that can even you can be able to see the the funds. There's, there's not that excitement that used to be there, there in the in the, in the past because people could go to the stadium. They want to see these players who are playing the seven circuit yes. how they are playing execution. But now with the relegation. Uh, no one knows who, who is better. But see now, the selection, someone sees how he's performing at the HSP series, so attract the fans. So we had a huge, a, a, certain, a certain group of fans who are just, you know, you have just a fan, for, not mm -hmm. for the rugby guys, but a, yeah. a, just a fan who wants to go and see this player who have been watching on the TV. So that has made a huge impact, attraction of uh, the clubs to go and watch. Even the fans also, it have reduced. Even when you look at the clubs this time around, there's no that competition among the clubs who are, you know, in the past, Clubs would want also to go and uh, feature their players, uh, and that there was limited spaces were given. But see now, it's even some pools are open uh, yes. because that tells you the number of clubs are so reduced and uh, that excitement. Probably they are just waiting for for the 15 season, and that's yeah. where the the challenge is. So there's a huge impact. But now they need to have programs to work their way out to back to again to the series. But it's a bit difficult because now you must win the challenge series, then you go play against the the last three. Like go, go, now the, 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 the road two. back <laughs> to the seven circuit, the HSBC seven circuit. It's an uphill task. Is, it's uh, going to be a very <laughs> serious task. Yeah, it's an uphill task. Yeah, yeah. just, just sure. to take back uh, to where Kombo, Mr. Kombo said uh, about uh, development mm -hmm. and academies. I think this is something that should be associated with the licensing. Yeah. For, for yeah. each club to, to be in, in this league, for them to play in the Kenya Cup or mm -hmm. for them to play in the seven circuit, they need to have the development sides or the women's sides. Yeah. Yeah. It happens a lot, uh, I think, overseas, because yes. we see all the teams, uh, for them to be in this league, yeah. they need to have yeah. under 18s, under 20s, under 23s, and reserves to play in the, in the secondary league. If it's the Premier League, this is the Premier League too. I think that is something that is really crucial here, because we get yeah. a lot of players who get lost in that transition, because some of them move straight from high school straight into senior teams, yes. having no experience at all. They've only played, for example, they've played at Koyonzo and then they move straight into Cabras. Yeah. You know, they, they should be at least somewhere yeah, where they get, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they get molded and prepared to yeah. play in this. And also, uh, with rugby right now being at its lowest point, yeah. I think uh, this a connection that is completely lost with a certain niche of fans yeah. and also players, because in the minds of the players playing through this seven series right now, yes. I think what next? Is, is that they've won the Kenya Cup, but where else do they play? Ah, because, yes. you know, the mm -hmm. HSBC had all these cameras on them. It mm -hmm. is it is one of the most loved tournaments in the world, but yes. you are not going to play in it. You know, uh, playing in a, re in a league yeah. below the, the HSBC is not yeah. something that... Yeah, attractive and all yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's really not attractive. And, and the not, players will be yeah. demotivated. Even I don't think mm -hmm. we could compare this circuit mm -hmm. to the others because... Mm -hmm. The question again, what next? Where yeah. do I play after this? You yes. know, I think it's really, really hurting yeah. in the mind of some of the really elite players. Yeah, and something else, if they don't qualify for Olympics now, it will be a disaster. Yes. I remember Olympics South Africa didn't qualify direct. They are also they are fighting, uh, fighting for, for that. Just, yeah, and that I don't, that's not from Africa. Yeah, and they say they'll come for it. <laughs> <laughs> we thought yes. now they could forfeit and say, no, yes. we'll come and fight uh -huh. uh, for that particular slot. So yeah. it's going to be tough. We have for Zim, so Zim playing well. Look at how they come at our young boys here in yes. uh, <coughs> the National Stadium. Mm -hmm. So that tells us uh, this is our lowest point because we expect even the boys actually to perform well because we are the hosts, they were playing at home. Yes. But they didn't, um, uh, they didn't match that particular level that Kenya normally plays. Yeah. But I think it's a wake-up call. They need to go and look at themselves. African uh, rugby is also on the lowest point. It's, uh, I think the people who are also running the game in Africa, they have issues because uh, mm. you don't see the, the right competition like the one is happening in Europe to prepare these teams properly uh, yes. for the international competition. And that's why the African team are falling up. <coughs> they, what South Africa is doing is their own initiative and their own rugby programs mm -hmm. and having their franchise team playing in Europe. They were playing yes. Super Rugby, but when Super Rugby stopped, they moved to Europe very fast. They didn't even have a gap. And they are playing. Remember, Stormers won the other year. This year, Stormers have reached the finals. Yes. So they are at par with the world, uh, the world rugby. But now when it comes to the other teams, uh, it's a disaster. Remember this guy, the, the chairman of Rugby Africa, took the World Cup to France. How? How? How do you develop so the game when you're yes. taking the game to France? France yeah. developed, they're hosting the World Cup. Yes. So it's supposed to host this game they in one of the countries. The Africa, Africa Cup, the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup, yeah, yeah, qualification. Yeah. How do you take it? And mm -hmm. we have African countries that are hosting. Yes. Yeah, so you should 
give us uh, give it to Kenya and tell mm -hmm. Kenya no we have, there's no way you're going to host this Madagascar have done it even yes. though they are not doing well so we have a lot of countries that can host even the Kulabas South Africa to give them the venue South Africa are very accommodative yes yeah uh, finally let's talk about uh, the rugby world cup that is coming up uh, next month the Web Ellis Cup can South Africa actually defend their title that they won and then Pool B alongside Ireland, Scotland, Tonga and Romania and Pool A has got the heavyweights. We can look at it as a, a group of death yeah. with the New Zealand, France, Italy, Uruguay and Namibia. The big question is this is the Rugby World Cup. Can South Africa defend their title from what they did the last time? Yeah, well, if they executed properly <coughs> uh, from the way things are, uh, they stand a chance yeah. uh, because uh, uh, they are well prepared and you've seen the last two matches, they played very well against the Test match, the Championship Cup against New Zealand. Yes. Though they lost, uh, they won against Australia, they, in, uh, they, they, they won uh, sorry, Argentina, the Pumas. And then again, when they went to Buenos Aires, they again they won against the Pumas. Uh, uh, the Pumas. But you see now, uh, as much as it's a second a second side, they actually they did pick the first side to go to Buenos Aires, and they did so well. But yes. uh, the, the biggest care is uh, the, the fly-off. Uh, Henry Pollard is injured, and uh, the, in fact, it's not part of the program. And that's why if the social media in South Africa and across the world, yes. they have lamented that they don't have a, a specialist fly-off. And you know, Pollard is okay, he's organized the game, and you need a, the kicker also. Because South Africa, when you look at the last two World Cup, especially it was only the, the third one, but mm -hmm. the, the, the first two, that's in 1995 and 2007, yes. they won through the kicks. Yeah, uh -huh. The Strathers put them in the kick. Yeah. But this time round, if they don't have a specialized kicker, that's why they're wide. Now they should be able to change their mindset. They say, now we're going to win by tries. Uh -huh. And uh, Mapimbi scored and uh, uh, Colby scored in the last uh, World Cup. Mm -hmm. So being the first time that South Africa scored a try at the World Cup. But uh, Pollard having been injured, now bringing in Man Libok, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this guy who has around seven tests, is a new guy in the circuit, but doing well. And they are, do, they are working out the cover of the, the fly-off. Uh, yes. That's Fafi Dikla, who is a, a fly-off, a, a scrum out specialist. So there's an issue. Also, when mm -hmm. you look at uh, the William, the, the Lemse is not kicking well, mm -hmm. but he's more, when he plays for the club, he's more playing of a fullback than a, than a fly-off. Uh, so so they, they, they are, they are, there are chances for them. The bomb squad is okay. Yes. Uh, it's intact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Though Yaga is injured, but they yeah. are running a specialist, uh, Dion Fori. Yes. Uh, Dion Fori is a good <laughs> specialist, uh, yeah. a forward specialist, mm -hmm. and he can be able to put the, the spring box on, on, on the spot to win the, the World Cup. The, the former English coach who is now the coach of uh, Australia. Yeah, the Eddie Johnson. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Johnson is also there. He has been big conversation when they are doing the test matches and also against New Zealand. is in groups here alongside Wales, Fiji, Georgia and Portugal. Do you give him a chance to get to the knockout stages and play against the big boys, the likes of New Zealand and France in, uh, the, let's say, the quarters, even the semis? Yeah, you know, you know, Nani, Nani is, a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a very keen coach, he's a very sharp coach, uh, Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Because when he was in South Africa, he assisted uh, Jacks and they won World Cup in 2007. Mm -hmm. He took England to the finals. Yes. Then he also, when he took over Japan, Japan beat Akel South Africa in mm -hmm. 2011 and yes. uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. And it was a big conversation across the world, how does Japan actually beat uh, the Springboks, <laughs> the former champion. Yes. Yeah, so, so he's, a, he's, a very, he's, a, he's, a, he's a keen coach, he's a good coach, an elite coach. And I think he can be able to put Australia. Though you can be able to see the guys with experience, they'll drop them. Yes. So I think he knows what he's doing. But probably has realized that Australian rugby had a problem with those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Cooper, though they are said he's injured and uh, he's, he's, now he's left them behind. So uh, I, I feel that uh, if uh, he's got in the right squad, <clears throat> and when they pass the last championship, the second championship match against uh, Australia, the, the Bets Club Cup, you find that now they were very close and they are winning that match, though New Zealand came and won by a point. Yes. So that tells you that he has he, he's picked over recently and he's brought Australia to where it is. And uh, as they move towards the World Cup, with uh, that pool is not hard, uh, I think he will be able in the quarters and now he'll be able to plan himself well. And uh, he's played so well because he has won yeah. and he has taken the team to the finals. Finally, we were talking of uh, getting on to the quarters where we'll have uh, one pool of having the biggest yeah. teams yeah. getting on together in a, a final yeah. four, a final four where you can have New Zealand, France, yeah. Australia, yeah. South Africa getting yeah. on to the same pool. Will that have an impact yeah. of getting on to the best team that can win the World Cup? 
Definitely, it have an impact, especially with the fans, the fans of uh, rugby, because now it's very unfortunate that uh, world rugby could be able to pull. You know, they, they do, the world rugby, they pull their, their teams fast, uh, early, immediately after the World Cup, they pull, yes. and that's why the music they have learned, and uh, they have seen people have commenting across the world, because you cannot yes. have number one, which is Ireland, number two, France, mm -hmm. uh, number three, uh, New, uh, so number two, New Zealand, number three, France, number four, South Africa, number five, uh, Scotland. Yes. And those, you find that those three, those three, those three uh, countries, they are in the same pool, South mm -hmm. Africa, Ireland, and Scotland. Yes. So that means one club among the top five will leave in, yes. the, in the pool games. Mm -hmm. Then uh, and when they go to the quarters, these four, top four teams are going to meet. So France, uh, Ireland, um, uh, Scotland, and South Africa, probably if South Africa makes it, and Ireland, because those are actually the, the big teams there. Scotland might go home, it might be unfortunate, but they, they, they defeated France uh, last weekend. Mm -hmm. So they're also in the, in the mix. So yes. it'd be unfortunate that uh, at the quarters, top two teams will leave uh, mm -hmm. the, the World Cup, and that might be able to probably to shy off the fans from watching, yeah. and they might wait up to the probably at the semis or the finals, depending on uh, how which team will be able to remain uh, in the race. Finally, Finally you, from what you're wearing, you are an all black. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just it's the all black teams to win this one. Yeah, the way I've seen uh, all blacks are playing well. Yeah. Uh, they brought in guys uh, like Ma uh, Ma Maong, we have Savea, they are playing so well. Uh, Barrett, the Barrett brothers, they have mm -hmm. come out, they are exceptional, Ratcliffe. Yes. Uh, I think they stand a chance of winning, though I'm a fan of Springboks. Yeah. Uh, but 2020, <laughs> 2023, yes. uh, still I, I feel the, 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 the cup will remain in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Uh, England, Northern Hemisphere only won once, mm -hmm. England in 2003. Two two three, yes. But I feel that uh, still, as much mm -hmm. as people are talking about Ireland and France, but I feel the cup again will remain in the Southern Hemisphere. That's well. why I, I give it for New Zealand. Mwale Mukikechi Kombo, a rugby coach and a former director of youth and at uh, the Kenya Rugby Union. You know, I'm Robert Rosoro alongside Ken Andrews. Let's enjoy some of what is happening in the world of sports. We had yesterday Manchester City winning against Burnley in the first game of the Premier League. When we come back, we'll be talking much more of the fan zone here on Y254. This is the touchline.